Well, if you just got done watching my Subaru review and then you just got done watching my Source Code review, then welcome to the Apollo 13 review. Now, Apollo 13 movie is the story about, you know, these astronauts that are going to go up to space, you know. But the thing with this movie, you know, is that they're not the first people to go up into space. I mean, there's been different missions, you know. I mean, Lance Armstrong was the first person to make it on the move. That was, you know, man, yeah, that was big deal, you know, back in the day, and you know. But this movie, but though in this movie, you know, it really kind of explores how, you know, it's like, oh, they've been out in space, you know, no big deal, you know. The movie kind of expresses it. I really like the way that it expresses it, you know, in a sense that people just don't care, you know. And then, like, when, and then, like, when they're in, just in big load of trouble, you know, and all that, it starts to get real. And then people actually start to care about the mission at hand and hope these three men make it out with their lives. Now, you know, this movie... Now, let me just say, from the beginning, it's kind of a slow entry at the beginning, honestly. I mean, they're all having a party at Tom Hanks' house, you know, and then they're wa and they're watching, you know, like the moon landing, Lance Armstrong and all that. And he's wishing he can go to the moon, and then eventually, you know, eventually, sometime later, he does and gets his men, you know. It's supposed to be him, Bill Paxton, and Gary Sinise, but Gary Sinise gets sick and all that stuff. So then they have to bring in... Oh my god, I, got, I forgot his name. Kevin Bacon! Kevin Bacon! I wanted to call him James, but it's Kevin Bacon. You know him from Footloose and X-Men First Class, you know. You know, you know Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah, anyway. You know, so those three, Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, and Bill Paxton, go up into space, you know, and they're supposed to go to the moon, but with all these technical failure and all that stuff, you know, they don't, and they have to find a way home. Now, this movie, you know, for one thing, it kind of has a slow beginning, you know, and then it starts to bring in exposition during the middle, you know. It's still kind of a slow, way, long ways till you get to them actually going up into space, and it's a real deal. But this movie is almost kind of like what I said about Source Code, how it's kind of really just in one setting. And when I really mean that in this movie, I really just mean kind of like them being in space. But though, then again, when you have, you know, people going from space, and then you have the people on the ground at Space Control, you know, who react to all the situations, you know. The way, the way this works, you know, in the acting, it helps boost this movie up a lot, especially Ed Harris. I actually liked Ed Harris. I didn't think he was necessarily Oscar-worthy, so to say, but he, he nails off a good performance in this movie. You know, Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, Kevin Bacon, you know, they're kind of like just talking amongst each other, you know. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is dry area. This dry outside world. Anyway. But though, like, Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, and Kevin Bacon, you know, them kind of, like, talking amongst each other is probably, you know, is definitely great acting, you know. They kind of work, trying to work together, you know. They have their differences, they have their fights, but in the end, they're willing to do whatever it takes to get home. And this is a movie, you know, kind of like, this movie, so to say, is definitely a great way to represent how, you know, people, you know, can work together to get home, to get to the place they need to go, you know, and all that. But though it's sad, but though what is sad, you know, is the fact that Tom Hanks' character, you know, doesn't get to live the dream, doesn't get to go to the moon, you know, and that really is a bummer for him. But what, but though it's good to know that what he believes in more, you know, is more important is his family and, has he, and that he has to get home, he has to be able to be there for them for the rest of their lives and all of that, and that's what makes it, that's what makes it so important for him and the decisions that he makes, and that movie does it pretty well, you know. You know, this is a Ron Howard movie. If you don't know who he is, he used to co-star in an old 70s show called Happy Days. He also directed other movies like A Beautiful Mind and Frost Nixon. And he even starred in um, one of the, um, uh, okay, yeah, George Lucas films, American Graffiti. You know, he was great in that movie. You know, his directing, his director debut, you know, I think it, I think it is pretty nifty. I mean, he's not like the best director in the world. He makes some good movies. I think definitely his best movie probably is Frost Nixon. Because it probably has the most drama in the sense. This movie, you know, it has drama. This movie really, it just kind of gives and takes up there. But though it doesn't really just completely fill the package that I was wanting in this movie. I give this movie a 7. If you were disappointed with me, man, I'm... If you're disappointed with my review, it's okay. You know, I mean... I mean, but you have to take, you know, there are some movies that some people like. And there are other movies that other people like, you know. This movie kind of leans more towards an 8, but it's not necessarily the great. So you know what? I'm going to change our review. I'll give it this movie a 7.5, just to be friendly, you know, because it's a good movie, <clears throat> but it doesn't really fit the package that I was expecting, and maybe one that you were expecting and it worked perfectly for you, but that's fine, but I'm just saying that's my opinion. Just don't hate... I just don't, hope you don't hate me for this, you know. I'm just I'm not saying that I hate the movie at all, you know. It's a good movie. It's just not exactly what I expected. 
you know, and I'm sorry if you feel that way, you know, and you're expecting me to give this movie a huge whopping 10, but all I can give it right now is a 7.5. Well, these are my three reviews. If you, ha if you still haven't seen Super 8 and Source Code, be sure to click up there. I'm still watching Perks of Being a Wildfire, like I've said, for three times already. You know, if you ha and hopefully I will try to do a review tonight. If not, I'm gonna have to wait till this next week because I will be gone this week. Hopefully, I will do my um, movie reviews for Despicable Me and one other movie that I can't name right now. Hopefully, Saturday night or whatever, Saturday morning, Saturday night, whatever. And like before, you know, be sure to tell all your friends. You know, subscribe, like, and all that jazz. And hopefully, I will see you Saturday.